Good afternoon. We're here in New Bern, North Carolina, the home of Pepsi Cola. And we're here to look at the New Bern battle. The Battle of New Bern is significant because it was led by Union Commander General Ambrose Burnside. It was a part of his uh, Burnside expedition on the coast of uh, the uh, United States during the Civil War. And uh, this is just a small portion of what happened at the Battle of New Bern. There was a much larger battlefield here before, but this is just a small park representation. Uh, the actual battle went on for miles, went all the way to the Neuse River um, where Fort Thompson stood, but we're just going to take a look at a small portion of it here today. So let's take a look. The Burnside Expedition was a series of engagements fought along the North Carolina coast between February in June 1862. The expedition was part of General-in-Chief Winfield Scott's overall Anaconda Plan, which intended to close blockade running ports inside the Outer Banks. The Anaconda Plan emphasized a Union blockade of the southern ports and called for an advance down the Mississippi River to cut the south in two. Burnside's brigade, who was assisted by the North Atlantic Blockading Squadron, began their crusade at Roanoke, Virginia, where the naval forces and Union forces defeated the Confederates and took roughly 2,500 prisoners. From there, they blockaded Elizabeth City and then made their way to New Bern, arriving at the Neuse River on March 12th. Because of local spies and Union sympathizers, Burnside had a general idea of the Confederate defenses in the area. Because of this, he decided to unload the three infantry brigades at Slocum's Creek and march the final nine miles on foot to meet the Confederate forces. The Union naval forces would continue up the Noose River to attempt to navigate the obstacles that had been set up in the river to slow their advance. After unloading at Slocum's Creek, the Union infantry faced the daunting task of marching nine miles through thick, swampy terrain that had just become muddied with recent rains. Burnside's Coastal Division had about 11,000 soldiers and Navy sailors. It consisted of three infantry brigades with 13 infantry regiments and a squadron of 14 gunboats. The Confederate Army consisted of the Pimlico Division of North Carolina and was led by Brigadier General Lawrence O'Brien Branch. He had about 4,000 infantry soldiers, which is only about six regiments. The dominant land feature in the area was the Atlantic and North Carolina Railroad that ran north and south through New Bern. Burnside's strategy for the attack was to send the 1st Brigade in a frontal attack against the Confederate main line. The 2nd Brigade would maneuver through the swamp on the west flank and try to attack from the, across the railroad. The 3rd Brigade would be held in reserve. After two days of marching, the first shots were fired at 7.30 in the morning on 14 March at the Confederate main line of defense. Although the attack was a stalemate, General Reno used this time to maneuver his 2nd Brigade into a flanking position on the east side of the railroad. What he didn't know was that the Confederates had set up defenses east of the railroad with the 26th North Carolina Regiment. Reno's 2nd Brigade advanced along the railroad and east into the swamp. The 21st Massachusetts in the lead fired on the artillery company trying to place two cannon on the rail line and drove them off. As Reno personally surveyed the situation and decided to bring the rest of the brigade forward, men of the 26th North Carolina saw the general and opened fire. Surprised, Reno ordered the rest of the brigade to deploy into the, the swampy woods west of the railroad to confront the Confederates there. The 21st then concentrated their fire on the militia battalion, which panicked and fled from the battle. Followed by elements of the 35th North Carolina, the remainder of the regiment, reinforced by a part of the 37th North Carolina, drove the 21st Ma Massachusetts back.
The farther Reno's 2nd Brigade extended into the swamp, the more Confederates they found. Reno extended his line to face a new enemy across the Bowling Branch Creek. Across the creek, the 26th North Carolina Confederates were firmly entrenched behind earthworks and had superior ground and a field of view. They successfully kept the Union soldiers from flanking them. Across the railroad, the Confederates were not faring so well. The 21st Massachusetts were being reinforced by the 4th and 5th Rhode Island in order to exploit the weak point made with the retreat of the militia battalion in the center. With the Confederate center collapsing, General Branch sent in the reserves and ordered additional companies over for reinforcement. This was only a temporary success as the attention of the Confederates were on the breach of the center. The battle in the main line of defense began to turn in favor of the Union soldiers and they made their way forward and crossed the berm. To make things worse, Admiral Rowan's naval gunboats had successfully navigated the obstacles in the river and were now in range to fire on Fort Thompson. With defeat inevitable, Confederate General Branch had no choice but to order a general retreat. Unfortunately, the 26th North Carolina did not receive the order and only realized what happened when they started receiving fire from their rear. They barely made it out without being captured. The Union Division, which started with 11,000 soldiers, suffered 90 killed, 385 wounded, and one captured, which turned out to be about a 4% loss. The Confederates, on the other hand, lost 68 killed, 116 wounded, and 425 captured or missing, which equated to a 15% loss. These are some of the breastworks that are left over from the battle. This is Redan number two. As you can see right next to the still standing railroad track. This is the position of the 26th North Carolina on March 14th, 1862. And they would have been facing south and as you can see, there's the Bullen Branch Creek, or river, and just across the way would have been the Union forces. Just where that green spot is. Of course, there's a house there now, private property, but they would have been facing the 51st New York of the Union Army. Probably about 7,500 yards away. These are some more of the, the continental earthworks or redans that were made during the battle. This is redan number three. You can see a lot of work's been put into restoring this area. Very nice walking trails, beautiful park. It's 
awesome that these earthworks have been here for 200 years or so. There were three medals of honor awarded at the Battle of New Bern. James Thompson, the 1st Brigade Surgeon and non-combatant, offered his services to recon the Confederate forces' positions. Sergeant John Terry from Company E, 23rd Massachusetts, was wounded in the leg while fighting in the woods to the west of the railroad line. Despite a wound so severe that he would eventually lose the leg, Terry continued to encourage his men to attack until he was carried off the battlefield. Private Orlando Cariana, born in Malta, was awarded the first of two Medals of Honor for his actions in the New Bern fight. Part of the 51st New York Infantry, Cariana's company was attacking across the railroad line when they took heavy casualties. Private Cariana seized the regimental flag and helped the color sergeant off the battlefield. So, all told, the Battle of New Bern was a resounding Union victory. There were about 150 killed on both sides and over 500 casualties. The uh, Union Army ended up taking Fort Thompson and occupying New Bern for the rest of the Civil War. Uh, it also, the, the battle elevated General Burnside in the eyes of the Union forces and allowed him to go on to greater things. So that wraps up the Battle of New Bern. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.